Hi everybody, Matt Lawton here, and this is the Astrological Wings channel. I'm going to take a look for the second take on April 22nd to 28th, the week of 22nd, 28th, um, the astrological weather for that. And just goes to show that Mercury retrograde affects astrologers too, right? I'd like, um, good morning, you guys. And in case you didn't know, the first take of the blog this week cut off at about 22 23 minute mark and um due to technological issues and um of course during mercury retrograde so it shows you how mercury retrograde works of course the one time the blog would cut off in the middle and lose its audio feed would be during the mercury retrograde so um there you go anyway just a little business person. I'm going to talk about the full moon this week in Scorpio in an intense fixed T-square with Pluto. I'm going to talk about Mercury going direct, thankfully, and a little bit about Mars with Neptune. So, And before I get back into that or the second time around on this, um, just let you know, the Astrological Winds channel is a free video blog. I do it on YouTube every week. If you have a YouTube account, you like what you see, please become a follower. Don't forget to turn your notifications on and it'll let you know when I post the blog every week. It has been a podcast long before it was a YouTube channel. It's still available on podcasts. No really reason to see me talk to the camera that's mainly what it is right now so podcast frees you up to do it at other times when you don't have to watch something and that gives you a lot of other opportunities to do it just look it up on your favorite podcast buzzsprout puts it out there there's about 20 of them pick it up if you don't find it on one on the find it on another i know apple uh, apple i podcast definitely has it that's one you can check right there it's also available on um, instagram the link so if you have an Instagram account, um, just follow Astrological Winds channel. you see it come up there. Sometimes I add some additional comments during the week in verbal form. I mean, in just written form that you can read real quick too. And I also posted on my Facebook newsreel, um, which is private. So you need to friend me with Matthew with two T's, Lawton, L-A-U-T-E-N. And the best place to find it besides YouTube is my website where I have it embedded every week. And I have past episodes there too. I also have the calendar of the week there too. Check it out, www.astrologicalwinds.com. That's also where you can find the menu for all my professional services. I've been a professional astrologer for over 20 years, been doing readings for over 20 years. Would love to do one for you or someone that you know when you're ready for it. Check the information out there right on the website and get and, the, and you can get in touch with me right there. Thank you so much for supporting the blog. Remember, if you don't know astrology well, you want to focus on the interpretations, not the astrological terms and get lost in that, right? And I ask everybody to please pass the link along if they can every week to somebody who hasn't seen it before. I really love the blog growing in that kind of natural way. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And let's get into this for the second time round, you know? Um, so um, yeah, a little bit of a failure and there's that Mercury retrograde there on my blog. Um, and so I'm gonna go right back and just start again just re and redo it. And what I wanna do is talk mainly this week about this full moon tomorrow in Scorpio at five degrees and it's separating from a fixed T-square with Pluto. So it's very, very intense energy. And it's, you know, that Pluto is actually the co-ruler of the full moon in Scorpio. Mars is the other ruler and Mars still in that sextile to the Jupiter Uranus conjunction that I talked about in last week's vlog and is also closing in on the other thing I wanted to talk about this week, Mars conjuncting Neptune. And then we're gonna talk about Mercury going direct real briefly too. Um, so full moon, I've told you guys this many times if you've seen the vlog, it's an opposition, right? It's the sun and the moon at opposite points in the sky. And the opposition is most of the time the toughest 
aspect to deal with where we're like forced to deal usually with the situation brought to us through a relationship most of the time but it can be some situation that we have to make a serious decision about and you know as i've told you guys you guys know how the full moon operates you know it's like it really ratchets the energy up we see people really act things out we see world events kind of apex we see natural disasters apex around full moon time so the moon is in scorpio this time and traditionally that is a very weak sign for the moon even though it's a water sign scorpio is a fixed water sign right and the moon you know has a lot in common with water because they're both connected on the emotional level but traditionally the moon in scorpio is called fall it's in what we call fall and it's a very weak place for it to be and the reason why is because even though there is the emotional content very deeply there it can really shake our security up the um, moon in scorpio the moon in scorpio goes really deep it it delves down into the deepest parts of our psyche to find out why we're emotionally responding in a certain way so it goes to dangerous places emotionally places that the moon would rather not have to go so much in when the moon is in scorpio we feel emotions very very intensely and what we feel them there in a way where we're going to either act towards something passionately or dramatically create a lot of drama because it's a very deep emotional energy that we're feeling it comes from way way deep inside and it actually is in the subconscious in the psyche and it drives a lot of the compulsive things that we do and that's part of the issue too with the moon and scorpio we act out of those emotions, those deep emotions impulsively, compulsively, and, and we can get into some very dramatic situations, especially in a full moon with other people, and especially in Scorpio too. Scorpio being on the relationship side of the chart, and it represents when relationships get deep, when you get to see the shadow side of other people, when you get to see the laundry list of the other people. Now, it's opposite Taurus, right? The Taurus Scorpio axis is the resource axis. The difference is fixed earth versus fixed water, both yin signs. Where are those resources coming from? With fixed earth, it's material. With fixed water, it's the emotional. It's how we feel about ourselves, you know? And so that's where there's a lot of conflict going on. The full moon in Scorpio is, is showing us what our true desires are where we're using power, where we're using even sexuality, where we're using our bloodlines, our heritage, things like that, things that are very, very deep, places that are the shadow side of the psyche that most people would rather choose to ignore. But when we do that, those things have a tendency to come up out of impulsive and bubble up as impulsive behavior and in in scorpio's case too coercive behavior too power tripping things like that you know seven deadly sin type stuff trying to manipulate others trying to coerce others into doing the things we want them to do so like we can really dissolve in a full moon into scorpio into power struggles especially with our intimate ones, people who know us deeply. And what we really want to do is use the full moon. Remember, the full moon is shining a light deep into the subconscious so we can get a grip on what we're seeing. We can see why we act the way we act at times. And instead of overreacting to that stuff and creating dramatic situations, what we want to do is use passion to create change instead. We want to open up a space and purge out things that are no longer working for us. If they're things from our subconscious that are making us react irrationally, that are making us act 
compulsively and they're getting us in trouble and, and getting us in situations that are like power struggle things with relationships, with authorities, with those in power, then we know we're off. You know, what we really want to do is go through that stuff, look at it deeply. What is driving us? Get rid of the things that we know are not good for us anymore and are blocking the ability of us to transform or change into something else. So that's what we really want to do on this mission is use the energy to look deep into our psyche instead of getting into drama. And once we do that, we can really use it you know, bring that stuff out into the light and, and, and deal with it. You know, it really is good. Otherwise we're going to go into that bad part of, of, of Scorpio where we're trying to manipulate others. We're using kind of coercion. It can even get to like, you know, literally with violence and things like that, that, they, that we use against one another. Now, Remember, what's the opposition? It's the sun in Taurus. And the sun in Taurus deals with things in a different way. It really is the most fixed sign in the zodiac, you know, so because it's Earth, too. So it's really solid and grounded at where it's at. And once again, on the resource axis, what the sun in Taurus is worried about these days is collecting more. Is it stable enough in its resources, in the material things that it needs? And its loved ones, too. Taurus is very, just like Scorpio, very interested in its intimate loved ones. And then that Scorpio energy is really, really focuses in on on just a few people it really has a love hate kind of energy that goes with people it really loves you very much or it you know really does not like you at all and hates you but it really is not too into superficial relation relating you know it wants some depth it will create drama even in intimate relationships to get the depth it wants to get the closeness it wants from others. It can even be what we call like, you know, negative attention, you know, is better than no attention at all. You know, that definitely is the Scorpio way at times, you know, of getting the depth and emotion that we want to feel the connection with others that we want. Even if it's coming out in these shadowy ways, we get that deep connection satisfied, but it can come from a darkness, a dark side of things. And, and the Taurus thing is, you know, what it's, gets triggered about with that Scorpio is it doesn't want to deal with that stuff at all. Taurus is like, listen, let's just keep going the way we've been going. Let's take the problems we have and just kind of ignore them. Can we just put them to the side, pretend they don't exist, especially if it's emotional stuff, you know, let's focus in on material stuff for stability instead, resources for stability instead, money, assets, things like that, you know, but that's the problem is there is an imbalance then. And then when, when the emotional stuff isn't being dealt with, it will bubble up to the surface through our relationships or through just a nagging feeling that no matter how much we have materially and stability there, that it doesn't feel like it's enough that, you know, that we're not emotionally happy that we could actually even be depressed, you know? So the whole trick of that axis is finding the right balance between the two things, the material needs you have and the emotional needs you have, but it can be very tricky and they can get very upset with one another. Taurus is like, don't take me down those deep, dark rabbit holes with you emotionally. And Scorpio is like, oh, you know, you're so like so much on the surface of things and you're just like overlooking, you know, what's obvious in front of you on the emotional level and on, on, on other more subtle energy levels. So here we get this fixed T-square to Pluto, which has just entered another fixed sign, Aquarius, right? A few couple months ago. And it's separating from it already. But the reality is when that moon hits that thing, when it hits Pluto, like I said, moon and Scorpio, sometimes it's just hard to like control any of your behavior in reaction to the emotions that you're feeling inside. Well, Pluto exponentiates that in a square. This is literally like 
just feeling such intense emotions about the stuff going on and the changes going on around you and the changes going around on and people around you and relationships that you almost can't help but act out compulsively without thinking what you're doing. And especially with Mercury retrograde still right now too in Aries in a sign where it doesn't leave it, where it's already impulsive. This is a double barrel here, you know, really just acting out when we're emotionally triggered and those emotions are going to be really, really intense. And once again, the best way to, to look at them is to be like, hey, you know, I see this and I'm going to kind of almost be my own a- analyst here, look into my own mind and try to get the stuff out that's no longer working for me so that I can create a space where new things can come in. That's what Scorpio wants. Get some new energy in there, ground your energy, discipline your energy with your mind and be able to open up to something new and creative that can take you to a new place you've never been to before. That's the transformation. That's the death of the old stuff, the archetype of Scorpio that then transforms into something new because it made room for something new. And that something new is a creative new you that comes into your own power when you have this energy balancing right. But the Pluto in there is basically showing you where things are breaking down in your life. If there's stuff inside that you're in turmoil about, if there's stuff on the in the outside world that's falling apart around you, that's the stuff you need to look at. That's the stuff you have to be brutally honest with yourself about. Where is your desires playing out with that stuff? And it's okay to have them, but like, are some of these things no longer serving you well and blocking you from where you're going forward? And not only that, but constantly putting you back into like that behavior that's so impulsive that, you know, you're basically shooting yourself in the foot whenever you, whenever you partake in it. So it's like, you know, that compulsiveness is going to be so hard to fight. But if you can shine that light in there, you can do that. Now, anything, relationships, situations, machinery, anything like that, that, you know, has been falling into what I call a state of disrepair or decay or something, once again, is going to be very at, especially with the Mercury retro going on right now, to reach that final point where it's like either give up the ghost or change this, alchemize this into something else because it's not going to continue to function the way it is right now. And so like, we have to be so honest with ourselves about what's driving us now in order to get on top of this energy well. And it can be a real psychological analysis of ourselves and an analysis of of our environment and relationships in the world around us. And what is showing decay? What needs reformation? Like I said, issues with authorities can be something that comes up too, where, you know, we're going to like help be held accountable for things that we've done or are doing and like have to answer to that. And, you know, and it could break down into a power struggle thing, or it could bring you into a new level. It could transform where you're at. So this is very, very intense energy. And like I said, Mars is the other, is the co-ruler in Scorpio, this moon. And I talked about, or full moon, I talked about it a lot last week, that Jupiter-Uranus conjunction on Saturday, one of the biggest events of the year, was being triggered very potently by a Mars sextile. Now, Mars is still sextile, and it's near the end of it. And to me, that's the promise that if you can get through this stuff, and get rid of the stuff that's holding you back, the old stuff that's holding you back, whether it's material, whether it's psychological, whether it's emotional, whether it's spiritual. If you can clear that space out, this really shows that you can get a lot of excitement, that the Mars will hit the Uranus and the Jupiter still and give you a lot of stimulation and motivation to move forward 
into a new place where you have more freedom, where you have more independence, where you have more self-fulfillment, where you have more power and you can expand and you can grow and it can happen quickly too. You can get a big jump there, you know? So it's a very interesting, if we can do that hard work, but it's going to be, like I said, we're not going to be perfect about this. There are going to be things that we get compulsive or impulsive about. There's just two, three, you know, the full moon in Scorpio, the square to Pluto and the Mercury retro in Aries, all three of them are just pushing the impulsive emotional energy. And so there's going to be times that it's not even a matter of thinking about it. It just happens to us, right? But when we can think through certain things and get to that other side, it can really bring in some excitement when we can see what the possibilities is when we've opened up a new space, new opportunities coming in. Now, what I want to talk about next is also exact this week. Mars is actually applying to a conjunction to Neptune too. So, and it's going to be exact on the weekend. So this is part of the full moon makeup too. And that's where it's going, right? And we have to be really, really careful with this. You know, we're driven by our ideals when Mars and Neptune get together. What motivates us is our ideals. So maybe we get something appealed to with that Jupiter Uranus conjunction being sextile by the Mars. And then, you know, it appeals to those ideals. But now when we put them into action, we have to be really careful here because this is the energy that can take, Neptune can take a lot of energy away from Mars. We can end up, if we've really not been careful about the way we're looking at things, we can end up finding ourselves in some very discouraging situations or circumstances where once again we'll lose our confidence we'll lose our energy and kind of feel like stuck almost like i'm not sure where to go now this energy like i said if our ideals do get appealed to it can drive us to do a lot and not only for ourselves but for everyone it's a collective it's like like almost doing charitable work really is one of the ways that you could output this. But this also can be output in another way. If we go through all that full moon stuff and we get the new ideas from the Mars, Uranus, and Jupiter, this can be a new spiritual journey, the beginning of a new spiritual journey, a path, like a peaceful warrior or a warrior for spirit a warrior for that kind of, for your ideals, for creativity, for that kind of energy. There's like, it gives up some of the selfish desire and is moving forward for the good of all. But it's very, you know, it can be very confusing once again in relationships, and especially in ones that we go through the full moon Scorpio stuff and it doesn't get resolved. It can end up having us feeling very confused and unmotivated about certain ones. Now, interestingly enough, the same day on Saturday, the sun semi-squares Mars too. So that actually will bring some energy back into the equation. That actually will boost energy up. The question is at that point, are we being too fanatical? Are we being too much of a follower? We really have to ask ourselves, question the beliefs that we're, we have and where they came from and whether we're being too much of a follower and you know why we're being motivated in a certain way. If we're feeling frustration and irritation, then there's probably a really good chance that we're off base with where our actions are coming from and the ideals behind them may be wrong. And we need to step out and reclaim some of that stuff for ourselves, the Sun Mars semi square is saying. So, very, very interesting energy all set up this week from that full moon in Scorpio with the T squared of Pluto and Mars very much involved with it as a co ruler, too. Now, on Thursday, the last thing I want to mention is on Thursday, Mercury does go direct. Now, you guys may have heard me say this before. That doesn't mean we get the automatic release from Mercury retrograde. It, then, if anything, it will really ratchet up this week and apex probably on Wednesday, Thursday, one last time. So it's going to be a very intense week of Mercury retrograde. And to me, there's no doubt 
that this Mercury retrograde period is so much about like, you know, being too impulsive or not thought out and then messing ourselves up. But a lot of it has to do with how much is being pushed on us too. Like that Aries energy is so pushy that it really doesn't give us time to like sort through, to integrate a lot of the stuff. So it's almost as if we have to impulsively act or we're doing it before we even know it even though the mind is trying to stop it it's just happening because there's so much going on so once again all those mercury retro things travel issues and delays you know um communication breakdowns of misinformation things that are falling apart completely falling apart or dying you know those situations and machines all those things that mercury retrograde represents you know Anything that's not thought out or impulsive is probably going to be the thing that takes it over the edge. But once we hit that point on Thursday, it is going to station and start going forward again. And we'll have a couple weeks of shadow where, you know, it's stationing at 16 Aries. And remember, I went retro at about 27. So it's going to have like, you know, a couple weeks where it stays in that shadow will slowly release us and we'll see a lot of the impact of the you know decisions we made during mercury retro and where they end up but then by may 15th it will go into taurus and that'll bring a whole new energy into mercury after these weeks and weeks and weeks that's that it's been in aries and in this very impulsive maybe at times defensive at times arrogant frame of mind so this will bring it down to the Taurus energy and really ground it and bring a completely different energy into the intellect and the mind at that point. So that's what I got for this week for the second take. And once again, you know, Mercury got me that time. It's been getting me a lot actually. So, you know, I got me and I see my microphones are still on. So I'm pretty sure we made it through this time without, um, any um, uh, technological problems. So once again, this is Matt Lawton. This is the Astrological Winds channel. Um, this is a free video blog. I've been doing it for years. Gosh, it was a, a podcast and a written blog online before that. It's been on YouTube for ye a few years now. Um, really um, been positive experience with that. I'd love you to become a follower if you have a YouTube account. Um, don't forget to turn your notifications on and please, 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 pass the link on to somebody else that's how you can pay me forward for this free service if you'd like to give a donation i don't say no to that a currency donation can be given to me at um, my venmo account which is the symbol at and then my name matthew with two t's and capital m and then a hyphen in the middle you know the, and then capital L Lawton, L-A-U-T-E-N. So it's L-A-U-T-E-N and no amounts too small. You know, if you can even give two bucks, five bucks, whatever, that's great. The best way to actually support me is when you need a professional reading or someone else you know does, or if you have a group that is looking for some of the astrology kind of things, go to my website. My menu is there. I have been a professional astrologer for over 20 years. I was trained for seven years. Everything you need to know is there about the different types of readings, the descriptions, the, the price list. If the price is too much for you, I can work for, with you. You know, contact me. It doesn't hurt to ask. Contact is there. My email is mattthue823 at gmail.com. Plus, that's where you can always find the blogs, too. If you need to go back to the monthly or the annual or last week's, they're all embedded right on my website. So that's www.astrologicalwinds.com. And I also do a weekly calendar there that tells you like some of the festivals, things like that, astronomical information. So you want to check it every week, you know, um, really love, um, help, thank you for the support for those who have, you know, gotten readings with me and given me support in other ways. Really appreciate it. Um, and, they, um, and remember also, Available on podcasts. You don't have to watch the video. Instagram page for Astrological Winds Channel 2. Um, so you can get me, um, find some additional information there too. Thanks so much, you guys. This is another week of transformation. I definitely know it's not going to be easy. We've got three things stacked against us, but we just want to try to look inside 
clear some space out, you know, try to meet authorities or anyone power tripping with you, you know, on a, on a, in a face-to-face way. Don't become a victim, you know, but don't become a power tripper yourself too. See if we can find some new innovations with that Mars sextile Uranus Jupiter. And yes, Mercury retrograde is going to hit us hard one more week. But it's going to start easing off. Now, next week, I'll look at May. And I can tell you right now, next week, one of the big events in May is happening. Pluto will be the next planet that goes retrograde. That's next week. But really cool, both Mars and Venus are going into signs that they rule. Mars is going into Aries, Venus into Taurus. So that will turn the energy into a nicer flow. Mercury retrograde will keep moving forward. I mean, that Mercury direct will start moving forward quicker and we'll start getting closer to the end of the shadow and things easing up on that too. So I, I'll see y'all next week. Once again, second take of this week. Thanks for bearing with me and um, see you then.